you guys what is up it is ivy concrete catwalk those of you who are new to my channel welcome i love all things thrift vintage new nearly new estate sailing sailing you name it i love it to my catwalkers Mwah! welcome back to a new video this sunday those of you who are newly subscribed thank you so much for coming along together on this journey okay so first i gotta lay down some rules i am going to be doing what's in my bag viewers have asked if i could do and two bags in particular and this beauty right here and part two because this has to be done in a part two because i have a lot to say about both of these bags this beauty behind me double flap model loss cloth chanel bag i ask that you guys hear me out on both of these bags because ownership of these bags has been quite the experience i'm going to tell you everything owning these bags and utilizing these bags with this chain around maxi I want to start you at the very beginning, almost three and a half, four years ago, I decided that I wanted a Chanel chain around bag and I did not know if I wanted it in a color such as this. I came across when I was looking on the Luxury Closets website, a yellow soft quilted lambskin leather i will post up here and here so you can go back and take a look at that video because that is going to fill in all the blanks with regards to the bag and how i found it before the deep dive with this i just want to show you the beauty that is this chain around maxi this color is a very hard to get color i have only seen them few and far between fast forward to here we are today and what has it been like with this bag this is not a daily driver i quickly realized that this was the type of chanel bag that you take her out you carry her for a period of time and i'm gonna be real and say maybe about two three days and you rest her you put her up some people don't like it when people refer to bags as she and this and whatever. That's how I talk about my bags and that's how I'm going to talk about these when I show you them. So it is what it is. When it comes to getting in and out of this bag, when you open the flap, you are contending with these two chains that run through the bag. I'm not saying that it's problematic, but it is a negotiating factor. It's just like on the Kirk Geiger. The Kirk Geiger is kind of structured like this. But the Kirk Geiger is a little more wider than this. And those chains are not an issue as much as when you're trying to get into this bag and you're fighting with the flap and you're also fighting with one chain connected all the way around the bag. And I'll hold it closer to, so that you can see. The only separation you get is right here so that the chain can rest when it is lying down. Okay, the ability to get in and out of the bag, it's driven by you opening the bag and then if you need the ability to open it, you're gonna be pulling on the bag. That's the other drawback of it that I look at as a slight con. The other side of this, I am always mindful when this is up on my shoulder for two reasons. The flap, if this bag is not super packed with stuff, you're fighting to to try and get this thing to hook on the magnet. It's contentious sometimes. You're trying to get your stuff in the bag and you want it to snap. You're listening. You're trying to hear for this click. And I find myself a lot of the times fumbling around so that this can do what? So that this can come down and it can connect just like it did. And that's the reality of this bag for me. I don't know what other people have experienced with this catch this flap this magnetic catch but that is my experience if you want that natural relaxed look and it's up on your shoulder and it has like a little bit of open like this i think that that's cool i like that look but sometimes when you really want this thing to catch it just doesn't it just doesn't catch does it bother me yes it does bother me sometimes it does when i wear this bag and i want you to take a look at the back of this 
for the most part, there has been very nominal rub with regards to if I wear a pair of darker colored jeans, there is a teeny bit of transfer from jeans that I've worn. You can barely see. But when I wear the bag and it is on my shoulder, I always make sure that I wear either a sweatshirt or a shirt or some type of a t-shirt that is long enough to cover the area that this is lying against, which would be my waist to my upper hip side area. Because if you do not, this is going to pick up transfer. If this were a black chain around maxi, it would be a non-issue. I wouldn't even care. But because of the fact that this is a yellow bag and the likelihood of transfer on this is very, very high, I'm very mindful about how I wear it. So as far as the underside, the underside of the bag has held up extremely well. The size of the bag, there have been no rubbing issues. There have been no issues, obviously, with this sturdy chain. It's not going to be any because this is three rolls of interwoven leather and silver hardware. It, it's just not going to be an issue, and I love it for that. No issues with the top of this bag, any of the pull round grommets here. I've had no issues with them pulling away from the leather. None of that whatsoever. Very limited as far as inside pockets where you can put things it is essentially and i'm going to hold it up so that you can see it just a big open space with one zipper pocket on the inside and that is pretty much it it is basically a dump it's a dump where you can put all of your stuff okay so i'm going to get into this and show you what is in my bag of course my nagetti zipper pouch some hydration eye drops, I wear contacts, so hydration is a necessity. Some money, some aspirin, because you never know, okay, time of the month, you get it. Korean fresh pink peach hand cream that I absolutely love. My cassette zippy case that holds money coins. The car keys attached to my Vuitton multicolor, this is just like a zippy, Cle comb because we need that for the hair. Some uncashed checks. My LV Ampriant. Vuitton, you guys know my life is in here. This is the specifics of everything that I do day in, day out. Absolutely cannot travel without. A pink pen with a stylus. Shea butter lipstick in nude gold. Another stylus pen that is basically a purple diamond. Absolutely enjoy using this. I love styluses because you never know when you're going to need to do something on your iPad or your phone, what have you. A Chanel, my favorite wallet of all time. Zip around Chanel wallet. This is a vintage wallet. I've had this wallet now almost seven years and it is one of the best wallets I've ever owned. I change out wallets sometimes, but usually I find myself here. Treasure Rare Ultimate Pearl Protection Defending Cream. I, I never like to leave the house without some type of a hand cream or some type of a face cream. These are sample sizes. They work very well. Vaseline, this is lip therapy in pink bubbly. It's supposed to taste like champagne. I've had this for a little while. This has been very difficult to work through. I don't really like it, but I love the packaging. My little macaron, I use this for vitamins. A pink gel pen, fun to write with when I want to make notes in the other thing that I have here. If I need quick notes, you guys know I got this from the Dollar Tree. It gives me Keith Haring vibes. Everybody uses these. Don't get rid of these, you guys. Just get a dongle. Get it so that it can work with your current phone. I have an iPhone 15. I have a dongle that goes and works well with these when I need to use it, especially if I'm somewhere and I just don't want to be bothered. I just plug in and it is a done deal. These are awesome. Love these. Love the messiness of it too. Some receipts, random lip balms that I picked up from the Dollar Tree, this diamond, this little round thing. 
some face blotter and don't ask me why i have a bow in here but i have a bow in my bag and last but not least my trusty lighter that my friend gave me from his business you can see the bag is now empty the inside of this bag is a light beige color there's one slip pocket i usually stick my phone in there if i need it there is the zipper compartment that has the chanel on the front and pull in order to shut it this is what you get. It's just a wide open space. It can hold everything in the kitchen sink, but you cannot overpack it. If you want a smoother look, you put lesser things in the bag, which actually works to an advantage if you don't overpack this bag. If you put a lot of things in the bag and you put heavy things in the bag, so your wallet, you may have your phone, you may have your agenda, you may have a couple other things, little doodad things, that begins to weigh this bag down. And when this is on your shoulder, I'm not gonna say it's uncomfortable, but it can get a little cumbersome because the bag is heavy in and of itself without anything in it. And then when you start putting things in it, the bag does become weighted down. I would say to anybody who's interested in a bag like this, you can find these at a reasonable price point because these have not skyrocketed out of nowhere. They're still sitting at price points that are feasible and make sense. Let's just say between that $3,800 and $4,400, $4,500 price range. I was fortunate enough to pick this bag up on sale at the Luxury Closet almost four years ago now for $1,786 plus customs and some other things that I had to do to get the bag in the, into the country, but right under $2,000. And I am so thankful that I did pick this bag up. And I'm gonna post up here the ultimate chain around bag that I wish I would have gotten many years ago. It's just this obnoxious black patent leather chain around bag, but didn't. It is now going between ten to fifteen thousand dollars. Beautiful bag, but if I'm going in that direction, you might as well go into the direction of Hermes. I wanted to sit down and show you what is in my bag, but also make this relatable to everyday life. This is not a day-to-day -day bag. This is not a daily driver. This bag is a beautiful bag to carry. It is a head turner. It gets a lot of compliments. It gets a lot of attention. It absolutely does. But this is not the type of bag that. I carry every single day. It's just too much moving parts with this. And it is the type of bag where you have to be careful with how you treat it. And remember you guys, I don't baby bags, but I am mindful about where I sit her, where she's being, you know, rub wear, all of those things that come along with it. Is it a little bit extra to deal with a bag like this? Yes, it is. Does it diminish the enjoyment with it? When you're worried about those things at the back of your mind, sometimes it does. But I think in the end, I'm the person that made the choice to add this bag to my collection. And I just take those precautions so that I have the chance to enjoy the bag and carry it and not do any unnecessary damage to her. And there you have it. That is the review and the what's in my bag for my Chanel Jumbo Chain Around Maxi. Let me know in the comments below if you've considered getting a Chain Around Maxi bag. If you have any questions about the Chain Around Maxi bag, stay tuned because next week, part two of what's in my bag, this beauty. So you do not want to miss out on that what's in my bag like comment and subscribe to my channel i post videos every sunday so tap that and you'll receive notifications each time i post a new video links to my socials will be in the description box below you can head on over to poshmark you can check out my closet i am concrete catwalk on poshmark if you see anything there that you may be interested in please feel free to leave me a message there or head on over to instagram i am the catwalks concrete on i you can dm me there as well if you see anything in my closet that you are interested in part two next week you guys Thank you so much for stopping by this week. Be safe. See you all.
next Sunday.